Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this Warhammer 40,000 Beginner's Guide video, we're going to have a look at Warlords and Warlord Traits. This is going to be a pretty in-depth introduction to Warlords, and you're going to find out what is a Warlord, what is a Warlord's trait, what do they do in the game. I'll go through some examples. We'll look at the different mission packs and references, have a look at the data sheets, factions and chapters, and finally, we'll have a look at any updates in the errata. Right, let's get started and let's take a look at what is a warlord. And you choose a warlord to lead your army when you build a battleforged army. Most of the time, these will be a HQ or elite character. If it states that it has to be a character and there's two or more, then you have to pick the one with the highest leadership. If it's a tie, then you can choose which one to use. Whichever one you choose will gain a Warlord trait. And they'll also get some extra command points if they're in a specific detachment. You can also choose one relic and then give that relic to another character of your choice. Now let's take a look at what exactly a Warlord trait is. And a Warlord trait is an ability, a buff or advantage that is given to the Warlord you've chosen for your army. The Warlord traits can be specific to your faction. Certain chapters will also have specific Warlord traits that you can choose, and you can either choose them or roll at random. But I think it's good to choose from them because then you can match them to the style of your army and the style that you want to play. So what does a Warlord trait do? Basically, Warlord traits grant powerful advantages to your Warlord that he can then use to influence the rest of the army. Some of these Warlord traits can add wounds. You can add extra damage dealt from certain attacks. You can gain some rerolls for some specific actions. You can increase the aura of existing abilities. You can improve the armor of the Warlord or other units that are within the aura. Let's have a look at an example. And I've got here the Vanguard Warlord trait taken from page 106 of the Space Marines Codex book. And each Warlord trait is going to start off with a name. And then below that, you're going to get a little bit of context, almost building into the narrative of how this would work. Then it tells you when you can use the Warlord trait, any keywords that are needed for a unit to use it. Then it'll explain what that Warlord trait can do. And then finally, any other conditions that are attached to it. We'll go through a few more examples of these Warlord traits later on in the video. But now let's move over and take a look at building an army and how the Battleforged army brings in the Warlord keyword and where you'll see it appearing in the rulebook. So when you build an army and you decide on a detachment, there's going to be some benefits you get from including a Warlord in that detachment. So you can see here the command benefits is plus two command points if your Warlord is part of this detachment. As you move up to a battalion detachment, that's going to improve to three command points and a brigade detachment is going to go up to four command points. You're also going to see the Warlord keyword appearing in the mission packs. And I've picked out the mission only war here from page 25 of the basic core rules, which you can download for free as a PDF. And in this example, it tells us here that once you've mustered your army, select one of your models to be your Warlord. And that model gains the Warlord keyword. And if your Warlord has the character keyword, they will have a Warlord trait, which you choose now. Any Warlord can have the Inspiring Leader Warlord trait, which we'll take a look at in a second, and is included here on this page. But alternative Warlord traits can be found in other publications, and we're going to look at those as we work through this video. So here is that Inspiring Leader Warlord trait. And this is a generic one to get you started. So you can use this straight from the basic core rules without having to buy any of the codexes or extra publications. Once you move over to the core rulebook, and I've got a page of it here taken from page 332. This is the full rulebook. You're going to see some extra conditions being built in. And this is from the Crusade mission pack. And it tells us here that the Warlord must be the character in your army with the highest leadership characteristic. So you can't just choose any model. It must be a character and he must have the highest leadership. And here it reinforces the idea that if it's a tie, you can choose which one to use. 
I've also taken this Crusade Mission Combat Patrol Assassinate from page 340 of the Core Rules book. And this is just to show you that the Warlord keyword can appear throughout certain missions. And in this one, it plays a key role in that mission. So it's really important to choose the right Warlord if you want to be successful. So it comes up quite a lot on this page, as you can see here with these boxes. Let's take a look at a data sheet now, just to see where we'll find that character keyword. And most characters are going to be in the HQ, but they're also going to be in the elite units as well. And so look out for those throughout the different codexes for all your different models. But the character keyword is going to be right at the bottom of the data sheet. Now you can use Warlord traits for your specific faction and even your chapter. And so in the Space Marines Codex book on page 98, you'll find a whole section on this and it's called Masters of the Chapter. And you can take a character and then you can promote them. So you can promote a captain right up to Chapter Master and this is going to unlock some new Warlord traits. It's also going to improve the power rating, so you're going to have to add to and it's going to improve the points value, but it is going to come at a cost and the cost for our captain to be promoted to a chapter master is 40 points. So once your chapter master has got that promotion, he's going to unlock some abilities. It's going to unlock relics and warlord traits. So for the chapter master, you've got this master of the codex warlord trait. And then you're going to find that for all the different kinds of units. So you've got master of sanctity. You've got master of forge for the tech marine here the Chief Librarian, the Chief Apothecary, Chapter Ancient, and finally, the Chapter Champion. On page 106 to 107 of the Space Marine Codex, you've also got Warlord's traits for the Space Marines that any chapter can use, and also for the Chapter Warlord traits as well. So if you don't go through any of those promotions, you still have a load of Warlord traits to choose from for the Space Marines and then special ones for the individual chapters. For the regular Space Marines Warlord traits, they're split into Space Marines Warlord traits on the left and then Vanguard Warlord traits on the right. But note that you can only use the Vanguard Warlord traits if a Phobos character model is your Warlord. Here's an example of a Space Marines Warlord trait, and this is the first one, Fear Made Manifest. So this is an aura, and it tells us that the Emperor's enemies quail beneath this champion's wrathful gaze. And the rules for this are, while an enemy unit is within six inches of this Warlord, subtract one from the leadership characteristic of models in that unit, and each time a combat attrition test is taken for that unit, subtract one from that combat attrition test. And here's another example from the Vanguard Warlord trait. So this is called Shoot and Fade. And this warrior harrows the foe before returning to the shadows. Once per turn in your shooting phase, after shooting with a friendly chapter Phobos unit within six inches of this Warlord, that unit can make a normal move or it can advance. In either case, if it does, that unit is not eligible to declare a charge with this turn. So this is going to give you some advantages there if you want to get closer to the enemy, but also deal some damage en route. And as we went through earlier, the Warlord trait is going to tell you when you can use it, who you can use it, exactly what it does, and then any other conditions that are attached to it. On page 107 of the Space Marines Codex book, you can find the chapter Warlord traits. And it'll give you some different Warlord traits for the main chapters. And so let's have a look at an example. Here we've got one for the Blood Angels called Speed of the Primarch. And at the start of the fight phase, if this Warlord is within engagement range of enemy units, it can fight first that phase. So it really plays into this close combat aspect of the Blood Angels. Then there's one for the White Scars called Deadly Hunter. And after this Warlord makes a charge move, you can select one enemy unit within one inch of it and roll one D6 on a two plus that unit suffers one mortal wound. And again, this plays into the White Scars real mobility aspect of that army. So a great ability to include for them. So there's a Warlord trait for each of the main chapters here. And there's one for the Ultramarines as well. And I play Ultramarines. So I've picked up the Ultramarines uh, Codex Supplement book. And on page 73 of that book, you're going to find a lot more of the Warlord traits available to them. 
and here's some of them now and you again you can choose or you can roll a d6 to randomly generate one for you but i like to choose because again you can play in to the way you want to play your army and the tactics you want to employ so let's have a look at example of one for the ultramarines and i picked the first one adept of the codex and ultramarine warlords epitomize the teachings of the codex astartes Whilst this Warlord is on the battlefield, you can roll 1d6 for each command point you spend to use a stratagem. On a 5+, plus, that command point is refunded. You can only have one command point refunded per battle round by this Warlord trait. So that's certainly going to come in handy and really ties into the whole narrative of the Ultramarines. But there's lots of others to choose from that are included in that book. You may also find some extra conditions for the Warlord and who you can choose to be the Warlord in your army. So I've just grabbed the data sheet for Rabute Gilliman here and I've taken this from page 63 of the Ultramarines Codex Supplement Book. And you can see in the abilities it's got an extra bonus if you do choose him to be your Warlord and it's called Author of the Codex. And here you can receive an additional three Caban points if Rabute Gilliman is your Warlord. But there was a recent update, and so in the errata that you can find on the Warhammer community site, you can see here that it tells us we have to add the following ability to page 63 of the Ultramarines Codex Supplement Book for Rebute Gilliman. And this is called the Avenging Sun. And if your army is Battleforged, this model must be your army's Warlord, even if another model in your army has a rule to this effect. So if it's a Battleforged army, you have to, and you include this guy in it, you have to include him as your warlord. So you've got no option there. And that now brings us to the end of this introduction to warlords and warlord traits. And hopefully now you know what a warlord is, what a warlord trait is, what they do. You've seen some examples and you know where they appear in the packs and references and also on the data sheets. And on top of that, you know where you can find it for your faction and if you play Space Marines in the chapter two. And also don't forget to check out the errata for those up-to-date rules. If this video is helpful and you're building a Space Marine army, then you might want to watch the Introduction to Assault Intercessors that I've created. And that's up on the channel already. And that goes into loads of detail. Again, a beginner's guide to Assault Intercessors, what they do, what they do within your army, how to include them, and loads more information. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful as an introduction to warlords and warlord traits. And if I've made any mistakes or you've picked something out that doesn't seem right, please let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you've got any questions, then add that too. I'd love to be able to help. And if I can't, hopefully someone else watching who's been playing a while can get the answer to us there. So it'd be great to hear what you think. And I love reading the comments and appreciate you taking the time to add your feedback below. I'd like to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make these daily videos possible. And if you're interested in joining the community, it'd be awesome to see you there. And I'll put a link for that in the description down below. But for now, thanks so much for watching. Please like if you like it, subscribe for more videos like this. And don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. <laughs>